How is this? Is it too loud? No? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need my glasses so I can read. Um, so this morning what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to walk through our budget and I'm going to do it in detail. So there's a lot of slides up here. I think I have 50-something slides. So we're going to go through each piece separately. Um, and then at the end, when, once I've gone through the presentation, then we're going to have a Q&A session with uh, our general manager, Bob Weber, and I. And we'll answer questions or whatever you want to discuss at that point, okay? So um, what you're seeing now is a proposed budget, right? This has not been uh, gone through the final approval process yet, but everybody has looked at it and we're in agreement with it, so um, we'll see what happens after today. <laughs> Um, these, the, this slide and the next two slides are the um, groups of people who had a lot to do with this budget process. Okay, so I thought we'd introduce um, their names. So um, we have our, our board of directors. Um, so Steve uh, Smith, Phil Birdsall, Bruce Cox, Jeannie Miller, Misty Keys, Barb Storr, and Ken Furl. And our financial advisory committee, uh, Julie Cook, the chair, chairman, chairperson, I should say, right? Mac Manning, Pete Camp Campions, uh, Jet Gary Fitch, Roger Harden, Philip Riley, and Greg Vincent. And then here's all your senior managers I think you probably know most. Um, naturally, Bob Weber, our general manager, myself, uh, Pat Davis, Bruce Evans, Jeff Houston, Sam McAdoo, Mary Jo Page, Paul Postion, uh, William Taylor, Becky Waters, and Chief Mike Williams. And here's a summary of what we'll be going over today. Just um, our the budget, the guiding principles for reforming the budget, uh, sewer system funds, property owners association cash flow, amendies cash flow. POA and the Mendes combined, our debt, master plan improvements, and then at the end, question and answer. So first, our, uh, our vision, our 10-year vision. Everything we do is based on our division and our mission. So Fairfield Glade will continue to be a growing resort retirement community and one of the best value master plan communities in the U.S. Our mission statement, the Fairfield Glade Community Club will continu continuously improve the resort lifestyle experience while fostering and promoting a strong sense of community. Okay, for our budget, um, one of our, our first principles to improve the infrastructure, continue recommended maintenance program, continue the master plan for facility improvements, keep dues and fees reasonable, and keep our capital reserve fund under one million. That last one was just added by our FAC committee um, at their recommendation to keep that, you know, to keep our capital funds uh, high. Uh, new home starts. Uh, you can see we're growing. And um, in 18, 2018, we're targeted to hit 90. Um, that's four more than 17 and we're expected to do at least the same amount in 2019. Our sewer service fund. There's no increase for um, 2019. We're uh, going to stay at $30. Our cash flow. Um, we continue to be really strong in this sewer. Uh, the revenue is projected to be slightly above 18 with capital spending uh, about half of the level of this year. Um, the loan for the sewer will be paid off in 2019, and so that should allow us to uh, build up our funds again um, in the capital since we won't be paying that loan. And uh, the fourth main project, which uh, was our big spend this year, has been completed thanks to Bruce's hard work and diligence, and he came in under budget, budget so yay Bruce. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, here's the sewer capital. Um, we, I've just broken it out into the equipment needed um, for service, you know, our replacement equipment, and then what is needed um, if you go into our capital um, funds for uh, capacity and availability. So our monthly dues, um, we have um, put in an increase of $4 uh, a month for, um, for next year, for 2019. $3 of that will go to operations and a dollar will go towards our capital funds to build our capital. Uh, B tier lots will be $3.40, they're at 85%. C tier, $2.60 a month, uh, they're at 65%. Um, Later on, or, uh, through this whole process, you're going to see why that increase is, is in there. Um, but, so I'll talk to, uh, about different pieces as we go through. Uh, trash fee will stay the same. Um, that's at $8, with $1 of that going to the fund for a new truck when it's needed. And this is just a, a breakdown of the different um, pieces of the total dues. So the homes on sewer will uh, a total of 100 a month, and you'll see the 62 for dues, sewer 30, and eight for trash. And homes on septic will be the 62 and the eight for 70. The amenity fees at lot transfer, um, we're also gonna put an increase in that to help with uh, amenity uh, improvements. Um, so that's all cap that all goes to capital. Uh, so homes are going to go uh, up to 800, so it's a 200 increase from currently in this year. Dues and G&A cash flow. Um, you'll see on the, the first line it says dues and G&A gross profit. I just wanted to let you know that that is a net of cost of sales because we've got the post office included in that. Um, you'll see that it's, it's a little down, uh, net revenues is, is a little down from um, 18, and the uh, capital is a little, is up just a little because of uh, a couple of the ma master POA projects. Net cash flow is down slightly from uh, 18 to 19. There's, here's the G&A capital, um, most of that is uh, from, I, from an IT um, capital uh, for um, system. And then community master planning at 50. Uh, community maintenance. Uh, you'll see community maintenance is, uh, is up, or actually uh, is the net number for rev excess revenues is down um, before depreciation. And then the capital spending is a little up in 19. Uh, and one of the, let me back up one second uh, on this one here. I was going to tell you that uh, one of the reasons for um, the revenue uh, over expense of depreciation before depreciation is uh, due partially or at least half of it or a little more from desilting, which we're going to have to do this year or in 19. Um, here's the uh, capital spend for uh, community maintenance. Uh, most of that is. Uh, replacement equipment, but there is uh, one or two new items uh, listed on there. Uh, a bucket truck and, uh, and down for the Ford Escape. Police department cash flow. Um, the uh, excess revenues over, ex uh, over expenses is up slightly um, for 19. Um, and also, which is actually, offset a little bit by revenue, and just so you know, that's not speeding tickets, okay? That's just, <laughs> that's just our good police chief. He's very good at, uh, at seeking out and obtaining grants from other organizations. Um, he just recently got a new one, and, and so you'll see that in the revenue. Um, and then our K-12 
capital spend uh, for 19 is actually down, uh, down um, and you'll see that master plan POA project. Um, here you'll see it in here, and it's uh, that completion of the police department. All right, and then most of um, his spend on vehicles. And see, he's trying to be really good. He said he needed a new truck, but he'll get two used sedans if, we'll, if that's cheaper. So <laughs> he's really being good with the money, too. Um, marketing, uh, cash flow is up slightly in 19. Um, you'll see the reason for some of that as a, like a, later on in the slides. Uh, fire department. Well, th that's basically a, uh, a donation type uh, situation, right? So we're uh, providing money to the the fire department, and um, this is mostly uh, for operating funds. They they go and do a good job of trying to collect money for their capital spend. So, but this is mostly for operating, which I think we cover a good chunk of it. Uh, he's around here somewhere, I know. <laughs> um, Let's see. Golf. Um, we'll go over rounds and fees and cash flow and their capital. Um, golf rounds, if, I don't know if you can see those, but the, in 2015, we were about 140,000. In 16, about 145. In uh, 17, 132. And, this year we're projected to be at about 130,000. Um, and we've budgeted for 140 because we are really hoping we don't have all this rain next year that we had this year. That's really hurting us. Um, our average rounds per course when we're open, um, these are probably a little easier to see, but we're at uh, 104. Uh, in 15, 105, and 16, 106, and 17. This year, 104. And next year, like I said, if we're keeping our fingers crossed. We'll be up some. We'll get back to 105. But one thing you see is there's not a lot of difference, really, in those numbers. You know, we're good when we're open. <laughs> we'll just have to say a few prayers. Golf fees. Um, Per 18 holes, we are going up um, a dollar. Um, we were trying to find a balance between the dues and fees to to try to make that a little a little more palatable. So um, we will be going up a dollar. Um, annual passes, um, you'll see those on the bottom. They're not changing. They're staying at the 2018 rate. <laughs> Cash flow for golf. Um, you'll see that our um, revenue is up, and of course our expenses are up too. But um, we are budgeting for, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, healthier than this year. We're hoping. Um, the capital spend is uh, down just a little bit for 19 from 18, and the net cash flow. You'll see the difference down there, and. That's a, a lot of that's due to our weather. Here's a, um, what we propose for capital for golf uh, for next year. Uh, and we've got a couple of uh, projects in there, master projects for Heather Hurst bunker renovation and the Stonehenge Golf Course Turf Maintenance, phase two, right? We started the first phase this year. Food and beverage. Uh, and I don't think you'll be able to read these uh, from the back of the room either, but um, our revenues per cover from 14 were $13.5, uh, 15 was 14, um, 16 was 15, and then in 17 we dropped down to $11.97. 18 is projected to be at 12.52, so we're up slightly. And then budgeted, what we budgeted for 19 is 13, 15. So we're going the other way now. We're starting to, we're starting to increase. We're trying not to be too optimistic, and uh, we're, we're being, I should say, conservative in our estimates. 
Our cash flow um, for 18 was, we're projecting it's gonna be about 650,000 negative. Um, but 19, we're, this is where I said we were trying to be conservative. Um, and we're going with 534,000 negative. Um, and then our capital, um, there is a, uh, some software included in that number that we hope will help us later. Here, I'll give you the slide. So there's a, a management system, a food and beverage management system in our budget. And then also we've got some, we've got some money in there for a Stonehenge clubhouse renovation. So the Racket Center. Um, the Racket Center, we've got projected to do slightly better next year in 19. Um, capital spend uh, is higher next year. We've got some pro ma major projects in there. So we've got, um, in here we've got land planning and clubhouse e exterior improvements. So that we've got um, a little bit of money in there to do something with tennis next year. Um, the marinas are uh, the ex we're ex getting a little increase in expenses, and that's because of the uh, motors. We previously were capitalizing them, and now we're expensing them because of their cost. They're under five thousand dollars. Um, there's their capital, which is mo is replacement cap. It, everything for them is replacement there. CC, the CCC and Recreation, we've got, um, they're um, projected to do slightly better next year than they did this year, um, but we do have some capital money, some money in the capital for next year, so their net cash flow will be um, increased, or decreased, I should say. So you'll see the top is replacement, but then um, we've got the concert park at Mirror Lake in there, and we've got uh, Robin Hood Park improvements. So for POA, um, you'll notice um, we've changed the way we've, we're presenting these um, to you. We think this might be better. Um, instead of just if giving you a whole bunch of numbers, what I'm trying to do is just give you the net for each area, okay? So if you look at the top, you'll, you've got the regular GNA, fire department, police, marketing, and uh, community maintenance, which are all considered the POA funds. So um, your, uh, your, what's budgeted for next year um, is, we've, you'll notice that it's 718 this year, what's projected, and then we've got 254,000 projected for 19. And then the amenities, uh, you'll, you can go down the lines, the total amenities spent or result is gonna be uh, a negative 715,000 for this year, 254,000 for next year. Right. So uh, you'll see the POA and amenities combined. Um, what we are striving for right now when we've made adjustments to be able to do this for what we were planning even to spend in 17 is to get us at a break even point so you'll see slight uh, positive dollars at the bottom. So this year, $3,000 and next year, 194. And that, uh, to, to be able to do that, to get to this point, that's where the $4 came in at the beginning. And that's why I said you'll see this in the later slide, is to be able to, to, be able to get to these final numbers, it re it's gonna require a raise in the, in the, annual, in the monthly dues. And that, and that keeps our cash balance where it is to be able to, if we, can, if we do this. So our capital funds, we've, um, we've not done a few things. Um, 
for this year to, to keep the numbers where they are. And then um, next year, um, we've got these, these items. I'll show you in a minute the items, but you'll see the uh, spend there. Here's our debt service. Um, as I told you earlier, the sewer is going to be um, paid off in uh, 19. And then the fiber optics is going to be, I think, the first quarter of 20. That one will be paid off. So that should help us um, to regain uh, some money. We'll be able to put more money back into the fund. And then you'll see the others uh, when they're due. Community Center is 2023. Cost cutting. Um, you're going to see on the left side here um, the things that uh, I should say a weak dues engine if we don't keep our dues where we need to, if we starve our capital, um, thinking of the food and beverage as a profit center, diminishing expectations, you expecting less from us or less from what we do in the community, um, and you focus on today or just cutting costs. But we really want to be on the right side, okay? We want to, we want to have a strong dues engine. That's why we're increasing um, the dues. Um, we want a capital-rich fund, which we're not quite there yet, but um, we're making significant improvements. Um, F and B as an amenity, we have to start thinking that way. Uh, we have um, rising expectations. People are expecting more, and this we saw this in the survey that was done. Uh, focus on the future. We have to think about what's coming, uh, not just what we have to fix for today. And then cost efficiency. Um, I myself am trying to do um, a lot with, with this part, and that is being more efficient with how we spend our money. Not necessarily, I don't want cheap, I don't want to do without anything, but if we spend, if we can get really good at being efficient with what we're doing with our money, then we can afford to do more of what we need to do for the community. <laughs> 2019 projects, uh, community master planning. Um, we need to determine what we need and where we're going to where we're going to locate it. So we, we've got to do more in that area. Stonehenge Golf Course Turf Care Center. The first quarter, the first stage will be completed in 19. We've already started working. Uh, police department. We are, we want to complete the renovations and upgrade the admin building for the police department. Robin Hood Park. Um, new parking lot in 2019. Land planning um, north of the Racket Center. Well, I guess we were being creative. <laughs> 2019 to 2020, uh, the new concert park near Mirror Lake. Oh, who said that? <laughs> Stonehenge Clubhouse, um, doing interior renovations to update it to Dorchester standards. Heather Hurst bunker renovations. The Racket Center. Uh, exterior and interior clubhouse renovations, again, to update that to Dorchester standards. So here is a breakdown of our projects. Um, by eight, for 18, what's projected, um, 19, and 2020. And you'll see we've, we've removed a few things from 18. Here's a breakdown of our, our dues um, at the $62 level. So you'll see, I don't know if you can read that, but um, GNA is at uh, $19.19 .19 a month, or 31%. Community maintenance is 29% or 1838 a month. Um, the CCC is at $6.13. Um, the marina, you'll see, is a negative 48 cents. The reason it's negative is because the marinas actually put money into the bank <laughs> at the end of everything. Uh, the racket center is uh, $2.05. Golf is $3.55. 
Food and beverage is $4.58. Fire department is $0.68. Cents. And police department is $6.37. And marketing is $1.55. Okay, I went through that really fast because I knew you were going to have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, Bob's going to come up and uh, help me with the uh, Q&A. Uh, he'll probably answer most of the questions, actually. <laughs> um, and also, oh, oh, we're going to heckle. I have to get away from you. <laughs> he says that during the week, too. Uh, we will have handouts at the end um, that you can take with you, too. And we've got microphones in the back, if you could go to one of those microphones, so that way everybody can hear your question. It'd be a lot easier for us if you could do that. Okay, I'm going to leave it up in case we need to go back to a slide, or I don't know what kind of questions we'll get. Yeah, we can go back to any slide you like, uh, if you want to see some more detail or what have you. So, so I'll open the floor. Any questions? Have you considered a survey of the residents for the projected uh, plans for things like the Mirror Lake? Yes, in fact, uh, all going back to 2013 when we did an amenity survey, the uh, concert park was the number one item that people wanted, and they wanted to see it in the next three years. Uh, so that was 2013. Here we are five, six years later. And you did pickleball. Uh, yes, we did pickleball. You that pay was another attention thing. to the survey. Excuse me? Do you pay attention to the survey? We do. We do. That's debatable. <laughs> Pickleball is the fastest growing sport among seniors. I know people keep bringing that up, but uh, if anybody's familiar with Del Webb, they are probably the premier uh, retirement resort community in the nation. And if you've seen their ads on TV lately, what do they show? Pickleball. What does that tell you? Yeah, G&A accounts for 31% of the budget. Can you give us uh, some idea of what goes into G&A? All of your admin is, is in G&A. All of membership, um, uh, accounting. Uh, are you talking about the first two lines on that slide, or are you talking I'm about talk POA? I'm, no, I'm talking about your graph or your chart, the pie chart at the end. This is GNA 31 percent. Okay. So GNA is pretty much strictly overhead. Pretty much, yes. It's it's uh, it's go back running. To, go back yes. to the pie chart. Oh. Can y'all there you go. Take this down. What number is that? Mm -hmm. Number two. two. Yeah. That is that is all of your accounting, your HR, your uh, IT. Uh, it is a traditional GNA. It's all the collections, all the billing. Okay, so, so the A stands for admin. What's the G stand for? Oh, general. Just, right. yeah. So overhead. General and administrative. Okay. Overhead, got it. Overhead, yes. Next question, slide 47, I believe it was. Yeah, let's go back. It, and anyway, it lists uh, golf is uh, an amenity. It looks like the net is going to be more than double uh, this year. To me, that means something's going to have to fundamentally be done different to get that kind of an increase. Uh, more, and that's certainly much more than could be accounted for with the dollar increase in green fees. Can you explain what's going to go into that or how we're going to achieve that? Yeah, the real key there is the, the weather. Uh, what you've seen, go back to the uh, rounds of golf. I mean, we've only made budget one of the last four years when you show the rounds, so it's pretty optimistic. Oh, there's no doubt. We're, yes. we're counting on better weather. And uh, if we don't have good weather, uh, then we could have a drop just like we did this year. You need uh, to be on my so over there. Keep on a couple more here. Yeah, so it's it's, uh, that. I should have Andrew over there to just go to that slide number, right? <laughs> Next, next. This the one you wanted? No, next one. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, so in, uh, in 2015, we had 140,000 rounds. Now, that was a year that was really normal weather pattern for the most part. 
2016, it spiked up to 145,000 rounds. That was a very dry year, and that's why the rounds spiked up like that. Uh, you know, we're, most of us are fair weather golfers here, especially our members. They know there's plenty of good days here, so why try and go out and play on a bad day? But then 2017, we had a lot of rain, so that's why I took a nosedive down to 132,000 rounds. Same thing this year. This year, rain falls even more than last year, and so down to 130,000. So we tried to look at that.